<laughs> what is something Americans get wrong about the UK? I think they think we are very ever so um, gentle and mild and moderate. We're not, we are monsters. The British Empire was run on monstrous energy and rage. And they were tough when tough they people. ran a country, they were very tough. tough. Yeah. Because we are not special. Mm. We're just ashes at the end. That is the great fear for me. I'm intelligent, but I'm not a brilliant intellect. I'm intelligent enough to get into this business and to be an actor, to survive the song. That's called native intelligence. But when I came, where I came from as a schoolboy, I was an idiot. I couldn't understand anything. So I don't know how I got here from where I was then. Obviously you were not. <laughs> I was doomed to, to failure. In school, I was told I would be a failure. I was told I would, I would amount to nothing. And I remember saying to my father one day, I'll show you. Now, maybe at that moment when I said, I'll show you, maybe that set a spark off. I don't know. Maybe something divine went off in me. But whatever has happened in my life has happened in spite of myself. Because of myself, I am nothing. Hi, guys. It's Sharon here from Butterfly Lullaby. And the date is the 29th of November 2022. A big, massive thank you to Hero Anthony Hopkins, a British Welsh actor. Thank you, Anthony, for speaking about your childhood and school and how even today you feel as a boy you was an idiot in school and you were told that you would never amount to anything. You proved them wrong, Anthony. I know you proved it to yourself and you say to yourself, you did all right, kid, with the photograph you have on your phone as a child. But you did it, Anthony. You not only proved it to yourself, but you proved it to our British education system. And the fact is, our children deserve better. I strongly, strongly believe that the arts, kindness and music belongs in education to make reading fun for children that struggle with the school system. Because dyslexics have a really poor memory our memory is so bad that it takes us longer to learn things. But we can do it. Look at you. You're remembering your lines as an actor. I mean, that is outstanding. Look how far you've come. You know, like you, education failed me. But I proved education wrong. I actually accomplished something in my life. And I'm so proud of that because I don't have a qualification to my name. The exam system is... It's just so discriminating because people with sponge-like memories, the, the people that are labelled academics, the people that control this world, basically, they seem to, I don't know, I feel that they, money and greed is all they care about, profiting from things, where for me, as a mother, I don't care about money and greed. I've been on a long journey where it's made me appreciate my family and my friends and how valuable they are. Um, you know, thank you, Anthony, for saying about how the UK is not what the Americans think they are. You know, the UK pretends it cares. It promotes this equality. But as a working-class person, coming from a working-class background, I know for a fact the people in power do not care about working class people because they make it very, very difficult for us to climb the ladder, especially now. And even Michael Sheen, actor Michael Sheen, who really admires you, and um, Richard Burton, you both gave him the, uh, the dream to become an actor. Because of you guys, he knew that he had the ability to become something and get out of Port Talbot and do something with his life. So thank you for that dream. Thank you for still making it possible for our children to dream. And I want them to know that this is possible and we need to knock down those elite academic brick walls, brick by brick. The pen is mightier than the sword. And I believe that the arts, music and kindness will change education forever. So I'm going to leave you with a few letters and uh, pictures. There's a letter from Dork Diaries author, American author, Rachel Rennie Russell, who supports home education. 
here in the UK, they these bullying academics and even the academics, you know, they they're struggling with it because they're just so controlling and they they lack empathy. Some of these people, I know a lot of wonderful academics that are kind, but unfortunately, the ones that rule the roost lack empathy and compassion for people and they're bullies and they you know you cannot learn if you're being bullied it's as simple as that that's why it needs to change in education we need a kinder education we need a kindness qualification in government service and education so Rachel Rennie Russell supports home education my daughter wrote to Dork Diaries author Rachel Rennie Russell and she talked about how she was bullied in school and how Rachel's books made reading fun for her. So Rachel wrote back and she supported homeschooling. What a beautiful, beautiful, kind lady she is. And she also supports anti-bullying. And I love that about her because she puts that into her books and adds real true life stories because her children were bullied in school. They would be called dorks. You know, um, she's turned it into a positive. She's turned Dork into a positive. How fantastic. I love that. I really do. And, you know, we went to the library here uh, where we live and we took the letter and Rachel had sent Melody a beautiful book signed to my favourite fan. And uh, the librarian really wanted to promote this. She really did. She was going to put it on Twitter and uh, support Melody and say how wonderful it is that she's now a bookworm, etc. But the powers that be, <laughs> you have to laugh at them because they're so pathetic. <laughs> they're so controlling. They really need to go and get a hobby and get, get a life, really, uh, because this control freak behaviour is ridiculous. It really is. They really sort of like try and make out that parents are evil and we must look after our children when really they are the problem. State education has uh, proved that with 9 million adults in the UK unable to read. Um, they're illiterate and prisoners in, uh, you know, in the prison system, they cannot read and 50% are dyslexic. So, you know, I get my words modelled up because of my terrible education because I was taught ITA English twaddle, which is twaddle, and no normal human being would put that in the school system. No, only the ridiculous elite academic bullies would do that because they don't want children to succeed in life. Um, but going on to the library, so, you know, it didn't get promoted. And, you know, when Melody was sick with asthma, I remember being treated like a criminal because I was home educating. I mean, all we wanted to do was give our daughter the education she deserved, a bespoke education that promoted her who she is. You know, Melody is art, music, singing. Uh, she plays a cello, guitar. She's a creative writer, you know, and she, she's a bookworm. Considering that so many children are leaving the school system unable to read, write and spell, I think that the government needs to support this and say, well, actually, yeah, yeah, guys, we need to support kindness in our education system, art and music, because we've obviously failed our children. So it's time to be a team player. That's what they need to do. That I've kept to myself all these years. Yeah. That basically started with just things that happen when you're a kid in school and you're a slow reader, yeah. and in my case, I was actually um, in a, uh, unable to read for for at least two years. Uh, I was two years behind the rest of my class, and of course, I went through what everybody goes through, yeah. is teasing, Yeah. and I had to go through that for a long time, and so the teasing, you know, led to a lot of other problems I was having in school, but it all stemmed from the fact that I was embarrassed yeah. to stand up in front of the class and, 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 and read. So you have always kind of known that you are a little different than everybody else. Yeah. I am so excited about this film. I cannot wait to watch it because Steven Spielberg is dyslexic, like me, my daughter, and my partner, many, many wonderful, kind people that I know in my life, friends and family. And we're just audio, visual, creative thinkers that sadly the education system 
is not capable of educating. So this is so exciting. I believe this film will help children to dream and achieve their goals in life in the creative world. I believe that perfection is overrated, so I'm not actually downloading these clips from YouTube because they're not mine to download. I'm just filming them from the screen and I don't care about perfection. It doesn't matter. The message is more important than the actual perfection itself. Movies are dreams. The Fablements is neither fable nor fiction, but the story of a young Steven Spielberg pulled between parents who are polar opposites. What kind of movie are we going to make? I'm a very private person. I would never even ordinarily take anything like this public. But after my mom passed... Um... To whom it may concern, I'm a motion picture writer, director and producer who's followed Melody Angel's artistic journey for quite some time. Ten years ago, her mother sent me some drawings Melody had created based on The Christmas Bunny, a feature film I had written and directed. I thought they demonstrated real talent and encouraged her to continue. I also heard some songs that Melody had recorded, which quite frankly blew me away. She is an enormous talent, both a singer and as a songwriter. In fact, this year I asked Melody to record a cover of the old Credence Clearwater song with the idea of using it in the movie I'm developing. As talented as she was 10 years ago, I've seen her make even greater progress over the years since. I'm pleased and excited that she's going to art college but I very much hope that Melody is given time to continue her home studies, which she truly loves and which I feel have contributed to her development. I hope, I do hope, no matter what education Melody follows, that her educators will embrace all of her talents as a graphic artist, as a singer, musician and as a creative writer. I sincerely hope she does not have to give up the development of any of those gifts which make her such a unique talent. Sincerely, Tom Seedman, Honey Creek Pictures. The Christmas Bunny is such a beautiful, heartfelt film. I just love this film. So does my daughter. It's one of her favourite films created by Tom Seedman and you know that's why I wrote to him because Melody was drawing the characters from the cast and I sent him the pictures and he was just so supportive even though she was so young and little he said keep on drawing Melody and he supported her all through these years 10 years of support and he loves hearing about her progress you know he's somebody that I admire because he supports our young people and that's what we need in the UK. We need people like Tom and Rachel Rennie Russell and Michael Sheen and um, you know, and all the people that aren't famous, that are kind, that I shall talk about later on. We need people like that um, in education and government services, tax paid services, because they will help create a better kind of world. Here's my daughter's metaphor. The house is a mother. It gives you shelter. Don't you just love that? This is from a little girl that struggled with the education system. She struggled to read, write and spell in school and now she's a bookworm and she loves creative writing. So never give up hope, guys. If your child is struggling in school, don't worry about it. They will grasp it in the end, especially if you can make reading and writing and spelling fun which I did. And if I can do it as a dyslexic mother, you can do it, believe me. Melody is very much like Auntie Hopkins. She's an only child, so she knows what loneliness is, which he experienced as a child with no friends in school. And my heart breaks for him as a child. And I'm so, so happy that he proved the education system wrong because he was not stupid. He was not worthless. and He was not thick. He was, he's an absolute genius in my mind because, you know, he paints, 
he um, creates music, he plays the piano, he composes music, and he's one of the best actors we've got. So how can, you know, Anthony, if you're listening to this, how can you call yourself stupid as a child? My gosh, it wasn't you, Anthony. It was the education system, and they're failing all our children today. And I really hope that my videos will help change that. And I really want to liaise with artists, musicians, singers, um, writers, authors, you know, to actors to create wonderful, wonderful education systems where we can make reading fun together as a team. I believe this. I believe this with my whole heart because I've done it with Melody as a dyslexic mum. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. I made reading fun. And thanks to Dork Diaries author, she won she made my daughter want to read her big books because she made those interesting and fun for children. And the illustrations are beautiful and that's what children need. They like to have, see pictures because they're children. They love to see the story take place and visualise it as they're reading. Here is my daughter's fantastic book character she created in graphite pencil and oh how I'd love to be able to draw like her I really would but man I didn't know how complex art is and how hard it is to actually achieve um, great drawings like this you know the amount of studying of the bones the um, muscles movement perspective etc I mean it is just as complex as being a doctor, I would say, or maybe not so complex, but it's it's near there. It's near there because I don't think people understand how much goes into the arts and they're so undervalued. They really are. They deserve so much praise because they do have to really study hard to get to where they want to get to. And the annotations, the writing they have to do is just, you know, there's so much of it. My daughter's been up you know, to about 12.30 in the morning, you know, uh, just trying to finish her homework. And I feel that edu education needs to change because we need to stop stressing our young people out and let them breathe, let them have um, time to be young and, you know, enjoy their life. Why is it so... You know, it needs to be... There needs to be, what's the word, balance. There has to be some balance. And the only way to get balance is by incorporating creative people into education and the academics actually liaising with creative people to create that wonderful balance and harmony so that children do not end up with anxiety and they get the education they deserve, a bespoke education. So Melody is now studying Art Foundation. Her art teacher said Melody's art is the best she has seen in a long time. Her English tutor said Melody's descriptive writing is very advanced. The tutors in the college comment on how, how hardworking Melody is and how she's always studying in the library. Home education helped turn my daughter into a bookworm. I mean, Melody says to me that, you know, the reason she's so self-motivated is because of home education. So she she praises it. She sees it as a good thing. The only thing that we struggled with was friendships, finding people that her own age, um, people that were like-minded like her, is very, very diff difficult. Um, so, you know, she's in college now and she's she's doing she's doing brilliantly. Not just okay, but you know, they, they say, Oh, if she's home educated, she won't be able to socialise. Ooh, doom and gloom doom. But guess what, guys? She's you know, been home educated, she's not on the internet, um, posing with, you know, hardly anything on, trying to attract what you know, a lot of poor young women think is love and it's not love. They're doing going the wrong way about it to find somebody to love them. And she's not smoking, she's not vaping, she's not an alcoholic, she's not taking drugs. Um, and she loves her parents. <laughs> she enjoys spending time with her parents. She loves us. 
She really does. And she proves this every Christmas with a portrait that she creates for her family. You know, I'm so proud of her. So I'm going to go back to this. Um, Melody could hardly read, write or spell in school. One teacher told her she could not read a big book like her classmates. I mean, Melody sure showed her. She really did. She said, I am going to read a big book, Mum. I'm going to read a big book. And I'm going to show that teacher. And she did. You know, thank you, Rachel. Renee Russell. I've, I've missed off the L on Russell. That's sometimes when I would dyslexia. You, you can type something, but you can sort of not see it when you've actually typed it. So you think you've got the L on there and it's missing. So thank you, Rachel Renee Russell, for supporting home education. Your fun dog diary books helped Melody to read big books. So, yeah, I mean, I'm just so excited. I really feel that if we can share these videos, um, we can get something done about education. I believe that. I really do. And what I want to do, I mean, at the moment, I've got zero, no, I've got no money of my own at the moment. Um, thankfully, my other half, Melody's dad, is working. But... Um, yeah, all our money goes on our daughter's education, really. And, you know, so, but we're happy about that because we want her to succeed in life. She's our only child, like, you know, Anthony Hopkins. I don't want her to end up being unhappy. And, you know, when, you know, I don't want to talk about this, but, you know, when we eventually get old and and no longer here for her, I want to make sure she's okay. So that's why I fight so hard for her and for other children, other young people to, you know, get the education they deserve and to do well in life. There's too many sad people in this world and I know too many people on, you know, mental health drugs that are not living their life and it's just slipping by and it just absolutely breaks my heart. It really does. And, you know, I want more for people. I love people. I love helping people. I can't give them any money because I haven't got any, um, but hopefully I can help change the education system so that they actually get the life they deserve. Well, I just want to share this. I really believe that as a team player, if I had a team, I could help parents to fund their children's education with competitions. I really believe that. Um, so I just need a team to help make it work. So hopefully, fingers crossed, guys, we can do this. I know we can do this. And I'm going to leave you with a video, um, a film clip by Anthony Hopkins talking about ego and how ego destroys dreams. So, yeah, don't give up on your dreams, guys. We know the brick walls are there. We have to knock them down, knock them down brick by brick. Write those letters to your MP. Even though they cannot do anything about education, we need to change the system so that they can, so that we've got good people that want to do something for families and children and that can actually help. We need a different system. Dr. Gail John is an absolute heroine. She um, was so kind to Melody because school failed her. And she felt so sad for her because she's a Senko teacher and she witnessed herself how the school system was failing children, young people like Melody, who learn differently, who they label dyslexic, or ADHD, autistic, partially blind, etc. And uh, how some teachers bully these poor children and make them feel stupid and worthless and say they're not going to amount to anything. And she blew the whistle on this and she said, no, I'm not going to keep quiet. You're not going to get away with this. And she's still fighting today to change the system. And she does an arts award, which helps children that have been failed by the school system to succeed and get into college. And I just, I can't praise her enough because I think she is one brave lady and she cares about so many people. She'd be so good in our government services if they would let her in. <laughs> she was a counsellor and we've seen, I've seen firsthand how bad um, the system is here in Wales and how it needs to change. We have got some good people in government service without a doubt, but I feel they're being held back. But anyway, um, so Gail took my daughter Melody to um, an art college because I was like, oh, I've given up on education. I was like, I'm fed up with this. I don't like this university. I don't like their morals. They've got no morals or values and they're promoting bad stuff. It's not education. It's political. 
So um, she said, well, try this college. And she drove her to the college twice. And she didn't even charge us petrol money. She's so kind. And she's not rich. She's not a rich person. She's just a very, very kind lady who cares about other people and wants them to succeed in life. She also took Melody to an art gallery. And uh, she bought her a pen and she paid for lunch. And, you know, Melody, Melody got to draw in the art gallery with another young lady who's also gone to the art college. And, um, you know, uh, she's also paid for Melody to have a, um, oh, what they call it, DBS, is it? A DBS check. Um, so she can teach because she loves teaching. She loves to help children to... Um, become the artist that they want to be and she wants to help them progress she really enjoys helping children to you know see their dreams and uh, get to where they need to be in the art field and uh, she's a brilliant teacher she's got so much patience and uh, you know and craft as well she's really studied her craft so you know I think she's going to you know children are going to love her I mean she used to be on YouTube you know, all these little art and craft videos. So I know one day, you know, the brick walls are there at the moment, but we're going to knock them down and we will get to the stage where children can progress. So, yeah, thank you to Dr. Gail John. And, you know, I'm so glad that she supports children that have been failed by the school system and helps them with the arts award so that they can get into college. That is really, really kind of her. And she helps other people, you know, that have been failed victims that, you know, don't get their voices heard. She's there for them. She's the heroine. So there are so many kind people in this world, guys. There really are. The problem we've got is that we need these kind people in government services to promote kindness and get this qualification for kindness um, in all our, you know, education systems and um, in government services so then we can promote a better kind of world and it will happen because if the kindness qualification is the most important qualification of all then and only then will we progress so here's a video from anthony hopkins stating that ego is the problem ego is a control freak and that needs to be deleted <laughs> take care guys the guy said it 2,000 years ago, of myself I am nothing, who is the father within the doer of the works. The kingdom of heaven within. Whether you're Christian or believer or Catholic or Protestant or Muslim or uh, Hindu, it's all the same. Life is a dream. So how do you explain the fact that you reached the pinnacle of your craft? I have no idea. As I say, I cannot take credit for anything. You see, the ego is the most dangerous part of us. Ego is the enemy. The ego. You have to have a little bit of it to keep moving. But you let that get out of control, then you have the power freak. You see them in the papers every day. The corruptness of corporations, the greed, the power, the belief that they're gods. And they all reach damnation in the end. But I'm not a religious person in that sense. I don't believe in the devil. I believe we have to pay the price for our actions. If I'm cruel or disrespectful to someone, I'm going to pay the price for it. So I've learned over the years, slowly, and I'm a sinner like everyone else, I've learned over the years to respect people, to be kind. And if I'm angry about something, fine, I'm angry. That's our only human. I can't be anything else. I can't be a saint. 